we think there's going to be a lot of volatility for the next uh, four to eight weeks. And you won't, don't want to be chasing the rallies. You want to be buying into the dips. So from high to low, you did have about a 9 or 11 percent dip. Uh, if you had money on the sidelines, we'd be buying into that weakness. What, what are the dippiest stocks right now, David? Well, so some of the technology stocks that had melted up uh, sold off very significantly. We still are a little bit wary about those. Even though they've sold off 20, 30 percent, a lot of them are still at 50 to 70 times earnings. So what we would do is look at the market overall, then look at the underpinnings of individual stocks. One group that has really lagged a lot this year have been the higher dividend paying, higher quality companies. Uh, they've also sold off with the market, even though they've never really rallied. So we think that's really the best place to be over the next six to 12 months. A little bit dull companies, but they're paying a three or four percent yield while you're waiting. And income is going to be very important over the next year because you're not getting that in bonds. And you're not getting that in money markets. And Valerie, you also see it as a pretty good market for stock picking. That means to be selective. And two stocks that you have on your core holding lists are Home Depot and Lowe's. Why? That's right. Uh, so let's start with the uh, the sector overall of consumer discretionary. I think it's a very productive sector for stock picking because there's a wide dispersion within the sector, meaning the stocks don't necessarily trade as a basket. So there there is differentiation and an opportunity to pick winners and losers. For Home Depot and Lowe's, they are both benefiting from the focus now on uh, home furnishings and home improvement. Um, I think that that people may have missed the data that was released last week by the National Association of Home Builders. And what it showed is that sales of existing homes and new homes and refinancings are all quite strong. And so what this points to is that people will continue to spend on homes and home improvement for the foreseeable future. And if you look at that in the context of record low interest rates, what that means is that the affordability of new and existing homes um, is more attainable. So I think that this is um, something that has legs, and certainly Home Depot and Lowe's are two of uh, several companies that will benefit from this. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.